Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I will be discussing the new patch that is coming to Blade & Soul on April the 23rd. If you are a new player, you don't want to miss this patch. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Now I did discuss in a previous video how to prepare for this patch. Now for new players, I did state that you shouldn't be doing much farming for gear because most of that you will be getting in your soul boost and your soul boost plus. And I also mentioned some ways that end gamers can prepare for this patch. But anyways, let's jump right into this. We have a lot to discuss so grab a drink, some popcorn and let's begin. Shout out to the Alice Korea Stuff Discord for providing all this information for us to stay updated in the EU and NA server. If you want to join that Discord, I will put the link on the screen. Just go to that link and you should join. Also, some of this information is coming from the Russian server patch notes and I will put link in the comment section of this video. And special thanks to Halle J or Queen James from the Alice Korea Stuff Discord or the Blade & Soul official discord for compiling all this information and breaking down everything so let's start so come april the 23rd there will be a new dungeon and this dungeon is called the forest of twilight or the twilight forest i'm not sure of the name for the na and eu server we'll have to wait and see now this dungeon will be replacing the Chaos Avalanche Den. Now Chaos Avalanche Den will no longer have stages and will be moved to the Heroic Dungeon category. It will no longer drop the weapon and accessories that we all know. So yeah. Now for the Twilight Forest, this dungeon will be replacing that spot on the Demon's Bane tab. And this dungeon will drop some new items. We have the Praetorian Weapon, we have the Vesper Ring, Vesper Earring, and the Vesper Gloves. We also have the True Vesper Bracelet. This is obviously on high stages and it's a super rare drop. And we have the Praetorian Soul Badge. So it's a lot of new items that is coming into the game and there's a lot to farm. For the accessories, they drop from the Twilight Forest at stage 2 or higher and you can purchase them from the Merchant in Mushin Tower. Now it costs 80 of the accessory fragments in order to purchase these items and there is no achievement required. These accessories will be replacing the accessories you got from the Sanguine Abyss and that is the Blood Knight Ring, Earring and the Gloves. For the Soul Badge, this drops on stage 3 or higher and you can get this from the Merchant in Mushin Tower. Now there is an achievement linked to this and that is I think 30 clears of stage 3, I'm not sure. But yeah, you can purchase this for 250 of the Soul Badge Fragments. Now this Soul Badge will be replacing the one that you got from the Sky Song Isle or in previous changes, the Chaos Avalanche then. In other words, the Battalion Soul Badge. Now keep in mind there's a different item to use to upgrade this specific item and I will talk about that later. Now for the weapon, you can farm this on stage 3 or higher and the weapon you can purchase this from the Merchant in Motion Tower. Now there's no achievement linked to this and there's no purchase limit. Also, keep in mind that when the weapon does drop, it drops for a certain class. So if you have like duplicate classes in your party, you're going to have to bid. So as of now, it is safe to just go with one of each class. Okay. Now we're getting awakened variants of these accessories such as the ring, earring and the glove. It will cost you 30 of the wing bone from this dungeon and 160 of the accessory fragments now there is an achievement linked to this and that is like 
30 clears of stage 4 I believe. So yeah. Now if you're wondering what happens to your Blood Knight Awaken accessory, well it does transfer over into the new tier and it gives you a plus one stage than normal when you're doing the succession. Now it doesn't cost enchant stone and it's basically just gold. Now I'm not a big fan of the awaken accessories, it takes way too long to get one. There's a limit, the drop rate is super low and if you're gonna pay to win to get this, it's gonna cost you a arm and a leg. All this for a plus one on your next upgrade and some cost reduction like that is ridiculous now if having an awaken accessory now would make it easier to get awaken on the next tier that would make so much more sense but come on you're gonna farm awaken now and then farm awaken all over again like that's crazy for example look at the weapon 90 percent of the player base don't even have awaken battalion weapon and we have a new weapon coming so what's the point it's just a rush idea. Now this dungeon will have a wheel located outside of the dungeon gateway and the wheel will drop all these items listed. Now you have the accessory upgrade stone and this is the stone you use to upgrade your accessory. You have the insignia chest, you have the guild stone box. You also have the special reward reset token and this is for the twilight forest dungeon so this will reset the dynamic reward for this dungeon. You also have the heroic dungeon reset stone so if you have the blood knight one now and that is the red heroic dungeon reset it is best to use them up from now because they will get antiqued come april the 23rd and this stone will be used to replace them also if you want to do hard mode multis after april the 23rd chaos avalanche then will be the easiest dungeon to do you also will get from the wheel the hourglass and this is used in dark world and you will get the weapon upgrade stone along with psyche now the psyche is used to augment your ring earring and your gloves okay and this is the grand psyche still on the topic of psyches we're getting a new weapon psyche and you can see the cost to get the grand version and we're also getting a psyche for our ring earring and glove and we're getting another psyche i'm not sure which item this is for but yeah if you know you can drop that in the comment section of this video we're also getting new insignias for this dungeon, so the yellow one is for damage reduction. And yeah, we're getting a new special one. I'm not sure if there's going to be any red one for this dungeon. So yeah. We're also getting new guild stones, and these will replace the ones that Chaos Avalanche then gave you. So your necklace and your gloves, the guild stones that are on those currently, you will replace them with these. Now let's talk about skill changes. Now in this patch there's not much going on for skills but warlocks are getting a small buff so I will put this on the screen. You can just pause the video to see all the different changes. So yeah, let's move on. Now with this update we're getting a new event and this is the Giganora event. So if you don't know you need to go to Jade Stone Village or you can access this from the F8 lobby. So yeah, you go to Jade Stone Village, you go to the dungeon entrance, hit Control and J or J, I don't remember. But yeah, you bring up your quest letters, you read the letter, then you complete the dungeon. Now I'm not sure if you can solo this. So if you're going in, just go in with a four-man party just to be safe or a two-man party. And yeah, kill the boss and once you kill the boss, you collect the coins. The boss has around 85 billion HP, so if you don't have good gear, then you might need help. Okay, as a new player, you're definitely going to need help for this. Okay, once you complete this and you get your coins, you can go to your Dragon Express and you can purchase certain items. Now keep an eye on what is account bound and what is character bound. Now you have your regular items such as your sacred vials, your pet packs, your stigma crystals and your sterling crystals. And then you have the battalion evolution stone that is used to upgrade your battalion weapon. This is not a guaranteed upgrade, but at lower stages, it will just one tap until you hit like around 
a plus seven or eight, but I would advise to use it at a later stage in your upgrade, such as a plus 10 or higher weapon. You also have the Brilliant Blood Knight Stone, and this is a guaranteed tap on your Blood Knight accessory. I would advise to use this at a higher stage of your Blood Knight accessories, such as you're moving from a plus 15 to a 16 or from a 19 to a 20. If you are a new player, just hold out with this stone because you want to use it when the odds are really low. Okay, now we also have a outfit chest as well and I will show the contents of this item. Now you can only select one item from this chest so keep that in mind guys. So let's talk about some other changes. Now we're getting some new imminent gems so whales get those credit cards ready and we're getting some new diet fusion. So yeah, there's a lot coming. Now I'm never getting these so if you're whale enough and you can get your hands on these, then good luck to you my friend. If you are troving right now, it is best to grab those diamonds so you can do your upgrades when the patch drops. Battalion steals are getting removed from the weekly rewards. These are the new items that will replace them and this is for the current weapon or the new weapon that is coming. Now as I said earlier, Chaos Avalanche then will be phased out of the Demon's Bane category and into the Heroic tab. Now with this change, you're going to have some loot changes. So Chaos Avalanche then will no longer drop accessories, soul badge or any weapon material of that sort. It will drop the guild stone for the current Demon's Bane dungeon which includes the Twilight Forest. You'll also get accessory tapping stones and this is for the new tier of accessories. And you will also get Blood Knight but I'm not sure of that. After the update, Chimera Lab is getting phased out of the dungeon list so you won't be able to join that dungeon from the FA lobby and the drops will change for the other heroic dungeons. So yeah. So with this update, you will be able to open more slots on your relic page. Now I will put the cost on the screen. I'm not sure if this is the cost for our server, but you can give an eye out, okay? Now if you don't know, come next patch premium transformation stone prices are gonna get a bit high. I'm not sure. Now the demand will be there because people are tapping on their weapon. And if the relic page costs premium transformation stones to open, then you know it's gonna go crazy in price so if you can cop some from now do that while it's cheap i'm not sure about the eu server but on the na it's like 1.7k or so for it now i'm not sure if the price went up with this update we're getting new relics so i will put them on the screen and keep in mind that you can mix these with the older blood knight tier relics so i will put some examples on the screen Keep in mind that the token used to purchase these items in the Dragon Express, it is changed. The essence remain. So you have two different essence, one for the Blood Knight tier, one for the uh, Twilight tier. But the tokens that you use to purchase them, which is the true Dragon Coin or something like that, has changed. Now for the Soul Arena buff, I don't think we're going to lose it with the introduction of this patch, but it's best to stay safe. So complete all of your Yeti 16s and all of your XP farming from now in case, okay? But fingers crossed we keep this buff for one more month because I still have HM50 to hit, so yeah. Now in other changes, the Berserker insignias will be getting changed. Now, before, Dual Blades was like the easiest class to trigger it because their burst drops their HP to less than 30%. But come April the 23rd, once you hit the boss or you get hit, you will trigger the Berserker Insignia and you'll get a big increase in your damage output for like 6 seconds. But in return, your recovery rate will be set to zero, so it's easier for you to die. So come April the 23rd, remove some of your power throughs and use Berserker in place of that. I'm not sure how much Berserker you need, but try to get the highest tier, which is the mythical one to get more percentage bonus. Okay, so every class can do a decent amount of bursts after this update. But keep in mind, this has a cooldown, so you need to keep check of this and sync it with your bursts. Okay?
So let's talk about soul boost because that's why you're here as a new player. Now before we jump into soul boost, I want to get this out the way because a lot of new players do this and they slow down their own progression, okay? When you log into the game after this update, I don't want you to do anything else but soul boost quests. Soul boost is meant to be completed on day one if it's possible and then jump into soul boost plus. Now a lot of new players they tend to do things by themselves when they can just jump in a four man party and get it done. Now if you don't know every quest that's in your soul boost and that is your soul boost not the soul boost plus you have the gear to do it because it's meant for new player it's meant for new player gear you don't need a carry you don't need someone to take you in just make a party if you're in the na server i'm not sure about the eu you recruit by doing a post in the world chat or the faction chat you will also see people recruiting for a soul boost train as well just jump in and get it done i don't want to see people doing stuff by themselves and slowing down their own progression if you take longer than a week to do your soul boost what's going to happen is that most of the game or majority of the game will progress leaving you behind and then they're going to look down on you and they won't accept you in their party now why do i want you to rush your soul boost once you rush your soul boost you're going to be in the soul boost plus area right so you're going to have battalion weapon battalion weapon is what the end game players have now and you will also get the blood knight accessories all of them and that is the same accessories that the end game players are using now once end game players start to get the newer tier of accessories they are going to look down on you and even new players are going to come into the game and they're going to progress and they're going to get into this trend of oh oh you have lower gear than me so i won't accept you right and that is the sad truth of the game so that is why i say guys rush the soul boost start to do your soul boost plus and blend in once you start to blend in what you're going to do is you're going to farm the new dungeon and try to get accessories from that dungeon. Once you start to get like one and two accessories from that dungeon, you're basically immune to the new player curse. And that is where nobody is accepting you into their party. Even to do like stage three dungeons or stage two dungeons, even when you have the gear to do it. That is just where the game is at the moment. Now the thing with this Soul Boost Plus is that it gives you most of the gear that the end game players are using currently, right? Now the end game players, they do have a higher stage of these accessories and the weapons, but don't worry, you'll get there pretty soon if you follow through with your Soul Boost Plus quest as fast as possible. Now guys, you have a chance to farm the weapon, you have a chance to farm the new accessory along with the end game player. So as a new player coming in, this is your opportunity to enjoy the game with the end game players. But if you wait like two more months to come into the game or two more months to complete your soul boost, then you have to deal with a whole new set of accessories because you're going to have the Vesper ring, earring, glove, belt, bracelet, necklace to farm, right? But right now, but right now you just need to worry about the ring, glove and the earring. So it's not much to do right now, but as time goes on, there's going to be a lot more stuff to farm. And that is where the soul boost is going to start to get outdated or the soul boost plus and you don't want that. OK, so as I said, push your soul boost first day, complete that and then go into the soul boost plus and complete it as much as possible don't focus on your exploration journal don't focus on exp farming don't focus on anything but the soul boost and then the soul boost plus also guys i will have a soul boost guide out the same week of the update so you can look out for that if you don't understand something you can check that video and it will clear up everything for you also, the story gear, you should replace that with the soul boost. Everything that the soul boost is giving you and the soul boost plus is giving you should go on your character if you're a new player. If you don't understand something, don't throw it away. Don't tuck it in a corner. Don't say, oh, I don't have it. Make sure to check your inventory 
everything you get from your soul boost plus tab or your soul boost tab if you're a new player it is worth using okay okay so let's talk about the soul boost rewards now if you're a new player watching this and you don't know what is soul boost soul boost is that system that is intended for new players so after you complete your story you jump into doing your soul boost quest once you complete the quest you will get rewards now the quests are very easy and you do have the gear to do it once you're doing the soul boost now you need to do this in a four man setup and the fastest way to do this is with a soul boost train you can look in your faction chat or your world chat for recruiting message doing any form of soul boost train and you just jump in make sure you collect your quest and you just do all the quests and you get the rewards it is that easy once you're done with soul boost then you're going to equip the outfit and then you're going to move on into soul boost plus and then that is basically the same thing you do the quest you call it the rewards now the rewards for soul boost plus is really end game and you have to move very fast with this the slower you move the more you'll get left behind so yeah now let's talk about the rewards guys now you start this soul boost with your oculus accessories and your true upsurge weapon this is a big upgrade from the last soul boost because the last soul boost plus gave you true upsurge but you're getting true upsurge in the soul boost first thing so it's a big upgrade at the start you're also getting the true post soul shields in the soul boost as well and you're getting all the accessories from the chaos avalanche then so all these storm tide accessories you're getting these for free just by doing some simple quests on a new player character or a low gear character now guys the soul boost will be giving you items to do your upgrade if you click on an item and you see a slot for evolution stone that item is in your soul boost check your inventory and make sure you haven't collected it as yet and use it on that specific item now keep in mind guys that your pet your heart your talisman and your soul do not push them to the manifest soul or the divine spark or the mythical tier follow the soul boost path okay if soul boost is pushing you into that direction stay in that direction don't force your upgrades if you go to manifest soul plus one i'm not sure if the evolution stone will be able to upgrade that okay so as i said stick to the soul boost path okay if you're using the manifest soul at plus one or the divine spark at plus one and the soul boost tokens are not working on it you can just level the soul that the soul boost is giving you and just continue on the other path and then you're going to roll over into the manifest soul plus 11. now the soul boost ends with a outfit chest and once you open that outfit chest and you equip the outfit you'll unlock your soul boost plus now the soul boost plus the quest for this is a bit difficult but the rewards are really end game like really end game okay now let's talk about the soul boost plus rewards okay so kicking things off you're gonna get the blood knight ring the blood knight earring the blood knight gloves all these items are coming from the sanguine abyss so as a new player you don't need to farm sanguine abyss that much you just need to go for the battalion mystic badge that comes from sanguine abyss so this is saving you a lot of farming the blood knight bracelet the blood knight necklace the blood knight belt this is saving you a lot of time in frostfire foundry as you know that's the worst dungeon in the game you might need to farm the amulet but you're getting a bunch of stuff from that dungeon already so yeah this is preserving your mental health okay also you're gonna get the battalion weapon and this is huge for new players because you're getting the end game weapon early out in the soul boost plus okay it's gonna take end gamers some time to get the new weapon now before this patch kicks in what you have to do is you have to get the true up surge weapon and then you have to like grind chaos avalanche then to get the battalion weapon that is why i said in early april that it's not worth playing the game until the april the 23rd patch kicks in 
Reason for this is if you had joined the game then, you come in, you get upsurge weapon, you get the true upsurge weapon, you strangle yourself in chaos avalanche, then trying to get the battalion weapon, all the storm tide accessory, then you go into sanguine abyss and you try to get all the blood net accessory, then you go into frostfire font, you try to get all the blood net accessory from there and boom April 23rd you have a new set of accessory to farm that is chaotic. All you do, log in April 23rd, do your soul boost to get all these items for free and you just smooth sail ahead and just farm the dungeons with the end gamers and just get the new ring which is the Vesper ring, earring and the glove and you try to get your weapon. So you're not really forced to catch up that much because again getting the new weapon will be a slow process so you're good. Also, you're going to get some more stones to upgrade your pet, soul, heart, talisman, and you're also going to be getting the reverent material, the faithful pet material. You're also going to get the harbinger material. So a lot of persons were asking about the essence in the last patch. So now you're getting them. Also, I see the battalion soul badge as well. So yeah, there's a lot of great items in this soul boost. Now the quest is what's going to determine how fast you're going to complete this, okay? So let me glimpse over the quest and see what's going on. Now for the soul boost plus quest, it's very easy. It's really about equipping the items that you get from the soul boost plus rewards, which is the ring and just upgrading that and just doing some stage two and stage three dungeon runs, which should be easy once you have the weapon and the ring and all the other accessories. So the quest there is very easy compared to the last soul boost plus where you needed like a plus 16. This time you just need a plus 11 and for the soul badge I think you need a plus 6 but I'm not sure if that is a soul badge but yeah. It's really doable and I don't see a lot of people complaining about this soul boost. The last soul boost had like a stage 5 clear of Sanguine Abyss. You don't have to worry about that this time around, okay? Now with this update, we're getting a new battle pass and this battle pass will focus on your battalion weapon upgrades and it will also help you to upgrade your blood knight accessory. At the end of this battle pass, you will get a brilliant blood knight stone which is a guaranteed tap on your blood net accessory. Again, you don't want to use this until you have like a plus 15 going to a 16 or a 19 going to a 20. So yeah. Now for the battle pass rewards, I will put those on the screen. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, you can like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon to stay updated on when I post new videos. You can also join my Discord server and I will post that link in the comment section of this video. Enjoy your day.